All right, what's up, guys? Uh, Matt Rohrbeck from uh, Movie Night, and I'm here with... Eric Marchant of Movie Night and Film Slate. Uh, Parker Mata of uh, Movie Night and Film Slate Magazine. So we just got out of uh, Terrence Malick's To the Wonder, yep. uh, the new film by Terrence Malick. So, Boy, did um, we. Yes. Uh, so well, it's, it's, this is the first film in like only like a year now, right? I know. I know. It's, it's like several years since we I know. So it's well, a usually event. eight or nine years between productions right. at least. So he, he cranked, he's cranked a few out recently. Yes. So we're so, on one now. Yeah. So too. anyway, so it's a movie starring Ben Affleck, uh, Olga Kurilenko, oh, and, Rachel McAdams, uh, Javier Bardem, and right. uh, and, uh, and flowers and, and wheat. Yes. Um, <laughs> so anyway, and buffalo. Don't forget the buffalo. The buffalo. So very much, it's a, a piece about love, and it's very much like Tree of the Life. The Institute so. of of relationships and how we interact with community in the suburbs as well in Texas, and then. Paris. I almost felt a little bit like it was like lost in translation at times for the really? Olga character mm-hmm. when she first comes to uh, Texas, mm-hmm. yeah. and then when she leaves, she you know she longs to come back. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, we should obviously say right off the bat, there's very little uh, dialogue or narrative. Yeah, it's very. It's just like sort of uh, physical moments between the characters more than like actual. Uh, like you know, they're talking it out, and there's like romantic exchanges. It's not really like that. It's very just sort of. It's very like like it's impressionistic. It's like it's all yeah. about movement, right? So yeah, like what I was saying. Like it's just like Tree of Life, where the cinematography is phenomenal. It looks Who's great. Who's the cinematographer? And uh, I, off the top of my no? head, I couldn't think. Okay. We should have done research. lots of steady cam. Yeah, lots yeah, of steady, steady cam. And almost, I thought it was almost like a like an art piece, just like in Tree of Life, where it's almost like a dance. Like the camera goes in and out and mm-hmm. uh, pans across. Gorgeous looking stuff, and also, and also the rapid jump cutting. Uh, he likes yeah. to do that as sort of like memories, like yeah. how you can only remember it in bits and parts, you know. And and I does, like, yeah, he does that a couple of times as well with sort of like key moments of of the relationships where it's just like you know, okay, well this is what when you were the most happy, and then right. you know, and then it'll cut to later on where this is the most disappointing. But like you were saying right before we filmed this. Some of the the way that the, the people act in this, I don't, I don't understand. Like it's not like, even it's, it's it's difficult to call it acting because it, yeah. like, it's not even really an actor's movie. I mean that's why all the, all the actors after Terrence Malick movies say I don't want to work with this guy again because he cuts out all my dialogue. Yeah. So it's hard to say. Oh, they, that was a great performance, but. Uh, it's very much like we said there's people yeah. spinning around in fields like Ben Affleck will someone will talk to him and he just stands there and stares <laughs> at them and like you you can even yeah. see him speaking in some scenes but right. they just mute him like it's like they put him on mute yeah. the whole movie well there's the voiceover like, going on over yeah, top and, and I, I understand, understand that yeah, yeah. I get yeah, it well, so. and the voiceovers are, are in French and, and Spanish yeah. Yeah. Uh, this time around instead of you know like with The Tree of Life which, which was a whisper or Jim Caviezel in The Thin Red Line which was yeah. again a whisper narrative so and there is some of that whispering yeah in it, I know it's also parts, worth noting though like, this is more of like a modern context like you know Tree of Life is more back in the, was yeah, it like yeah, the 40s yeah. 50s when yeah it, it, it was growing up in Texas sort of like a quote unquote um Autobiography of Terrence Malick's childhood, possibly where so, this is where this is yeah. the modern suburbs modern. in Texas. And I like how he evokes a lot of the things. Like he has a, like there's fishing in one part. There's a you know, shopping oh, center. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really the one thing that made me laugh. Like it's almost a parody of a Terrence Malick thing. I love the there was a steady cam shot onto the Sonic food. Uh, did you see that? Yeah, I did. It's like it the, was pretty good. The restaurant, and yeah. you're just like. I mean, it's it's good. It all looks good. I mean, as a narrative, I'm not the biggest fan of Terrence It's Malick, almost like a series I mean, of scenes that he's written. It's a montage. basically giving um, the actors... Do you remember the old, like, the really old around. documentary, Man with a Movie Camera? Yeah, Where it's yeah. just yeah. kind of just showing life. And just, mm-hmm. like, it's like a, ca- a man with a movie camera. Just in the, a beautiful score in the background, and it just shows life. And this but did you find... I think my, one of my issues I had with the film, did you find, like, sort of the love story that he was trying to capture through sort of memory, perceptions of memory, like the different little moments? Didn't you find it a little bit... Coherent, like I didn't yeah. sort of totally get sort of how they're falling out of their relationship, and, and I think that's a lack because of the lack of dialogue. I think that is a part of it, and I just but like, a lot of stuff get a lot of stuff gets cut out. Like they cut out certain yeah. like moments of the characters. You're like, exactly. hey, wait, what? Why yeah, maybe she's... that's on the cutting room floor. You know, yeah. like you get some more context into what that relationship was. Yeah, or isn't. Yeah, so yeah, he, he needed more room for shots. Of and, yeah, and yeah. It's, no, it's it's good, but I mean, it's worth a watch if you like Tree of Life. I think you uh, you might like this. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I am a little surprised that like something like this more so than maybe the Tree of Life that he used big name actors because I kind of feel that that takes uh, you out of the the situations yeah. a little bit because a lot of the people that he uses are, are locals in Texas, but then you have Ben Affleck and Javier Bardem who is good, but oh, he's, yeah, we gotta get yeah, to Javier Bardem. He, he plays a, a priest who is questioning his faith and. 
and sort of um, going around and, and helping the people in the, in the community, but he's also, again, very depressed right. because he, he doesn't know where he's going emotionally and, and, and spiritually. It, isn't, it feels yeah. like, this is, I know this is, it feels like it's, it's, it's in another movie, though. Yeah. It's hard, as, like, even though, like, everything in a Malik movie seems like it's in another movie, but, like, Because they do, like, like, Bardem's character does cross paths with Olga's character yeah. and Ben Affleck's character, but... They, he, it doesn't feel like he's really integrated into no, the film no, that much. No, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that's what I mean. He kind of felt like just an add-on that he probably had a bigger part. I'm assuming. Yeah, and even but McAdams like, kind yeah. of just pops in for one small chunk of the movie, and yeah, then yeah. she disappears. Yeah. So I mean, overall, I think we all think it's worth a. I mean, if you like Malick, you Her I don't experimental film. Yeah, make, exactly. Yeah. If it, but I mean. Beware! There's very little dialogue. You're gonna to have to be awake. And it, for it's this it's one. it's very slow paced. I mean, yeah. it's some, it, at times it, 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 you get caught up in its spell, and sometimes you're just sort of there scratching your head. Yeah, so exactly. It's a little uneven. So, but. I mean, I would say when it comes out, I don't know if it has a, a release date. It does in, in in Canada. VBS is releasing it, but it has yet to have a, an American distributor. So um, maybe it'll get picked up. Uh, by smaller companies like and Fox Searchlight. So out of five, what did you guys give it on Movie Night Scale? Uh, I'm maybe a it's a hard movie yeah. to rate because it's so abstract. Because it's not, it doesn't follow the the, the normal conventions of a, of a film. But I guess if I had to give it something, I I would lean to a positive three. But two and a half is where I am right now. Yeah. But we're still kind I, of digesting it. I'd yeah. I'd agree with Eric around two point five three. I'm just not a big Malik guy. But I mean, I think it's it's interesting. It's really gorgeous. And I mean, as a narrative, I'm not too big on it. But I mean. And it's still worth a watch. Yeah, and I'd say I'm, I give it a three as well. I okay. think it's one of his so weaker think, films. Yeah. So. Uh, unanimous 2.5 to 3. And then, uh, so going on, we also got out of... Uh, oh, uh, J... Uh, J.A.S. Uh, Bayon? Bayonto, or? The, the director of the orphanage. How yeah, we apologize. Sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we um, haven't done our IMDb research. <laughs> I know we shouldn't have done this before, <laughs> but we just got out of the impossible. Yes. And um, right before this, so um, Princess Boyles. Yes, exactly. Really so nice three three uh, sort of non-consecutive discussions about this film before we've now before we're now on camera about it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, to yeah. start off, so it's a story about the, the tsunami, tsunami in Thailand in two thousand. Right? Yeah, 2004. Four, it took about 250,000 yeah, yeah. lives, I think. Yeah, yeah. Again, research was key. I but know, yeah. yeah. So, but you get to see the devastation, and it, it focuses on one particular family. Um, the a, rich, mother, a rich white family of four. Well, well the mother and father are played by Naomi Watson, Ewan yeah. McGregor, and their three children, um, all boys. And, uh, Tom Holland plays one of them. Yes. Stand out very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Tom uh, Holland. Lee's is, performance, yeah. too, we should mention. That. I would say that. Tom Holland is, like, the, the key driving force in the film, and I think... Uh, I absolutely love the movie. Like I'm, I know Parker, we're gonna get to Parker in a Parker's second. Parker's cold and, and me, and myself, critical. myself and Eric did really, really enjoy it. Yes. And um, it, I thought like it's very emotional and just it's it's impressive for being a, for being an independent film too. I mean, they got fifty million dollars yeah. to do it, but yeah. I think it's the best looking disaster movie I've seen in a. That's real sort of and it has issue. that emotional punch, yeah. I think, as well. I mean, when um, you know they reunite. Parker will probably explain Look a little the bit more. swells of the score. You yeah. really do feel the emotion, or at least yeah. I did. I'm and it's sure just, it's all based does. on a true story, so I think that adds to it, too. I think if, like, I was saying to Parker that, like, if it wasn't a true story and it was just a story they made up about using the tsunami that really happened and stuff, maybe it wouldn't be as, or it would be more manipulative to me. But, like, I felt like all of the beats, like, it's uh, it's graphically violent in parts. Yeah, like I mean, when the actual place. tsunami yeah. hits, there's yeah, those, a sequence those um, where really Watts' yeah. character is underwater and, mm -hmm. and Tom Holland, and they're being berated by everything that's, you know, coming at them, whether it be, you know, uh, debris or... Uh, furniture or whatever and uh, trees and, and you really see the impact physically the toll that it takes on them and that's what a lot of disaster movies don't yeah. have well I think see that's where that's the one scene where I think that the sort of more romanticized glossy style helps uh, in those scenes because it brings out the wounds it brings out the pain or when she's being dragged by one of the locals yeah. who's helping her it's like you said very visceral uh, yeah. before the, the it's effective and yeah. I think that that carries it through in the sound I thought the particular it, the, just the sounds of things yeah. hitting and I thought, I I was thought actually, that opening the opening sound just where it's in blackness and yeah. it's just that rumbling I don't know why I think it was and the makeup too I think the yeah, makeup is another key thing I mean Naomi yeah. Watts' character um, goes through without spoiling it um, some series of injuries that are, are life threatening and uh, 
the, the, the makeup and effects are really quite well done and, and yeah. nasty. Let's, 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 let's not dodge around some of the issues. With I the, know, we'll get to that. I slow just, motion we'll go, swelling we'll get, to your neg- we'll get to your okay. negatives in a second. But we really talked about okay. um, the underwater scenes where they show the tsunami. Yeah. Hit and they, there's like these underwater scenes, I don't know like if it, it must have been all CG, I would assume. But like, well um, integrated CG. Yeah, yeah, there was only CG. one yeah. moment after the, 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 the uh, initial tsunami hits when they're walking around in the devastation that I kind of noticed was yeah. green yeah. screened. But like but most of that, it looks very impressive impressive for being such like a smaller uh, independent uh, Spanish main film and like the underwater scenes you see like Naomi Watts' character and uh, Tom Holland yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. his character just swept underwater and you see them get banged up about uh, like all it was really really impressive yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially so, when uh, the debris coming and smacking the head and they're yeah, twirling around just, that's very good we it's, have to mention Ewan McGregor because it'd be a crime like against humanity crazy. because some people in the screening loved him <laughs> so much he's a supporting role he's He's good. He's I mean, there's though, the whole time. He's not really sort of. Well, there's the one scene he has when he's on the phone to um, his father-in-law, and he's telling him the situation yeah. and where where he stands, and he can't yeah. find um, his oldest son Tom Holland and uh, then Watts. And that's a really good moment. It's very impactful, I think. And he's with a group of other survivors, and they're all sort of sharing their moment together. And he breaks down. And I think that'll be if he gets nominated for a supporting actor nomination, that will be his clip. I mean, I'm with. I I, I think it's good. Yeah, but he doesn't have that much to do no. in the film. Yeah. I think like he's he's good and he's there, and that one scene is really good. But he's absent for a lot of the film, yeah. like the first. Like he's there at the beginning, but the middle part he's. Completely yeah, you dead. think that maybe he died. Uh, yeah, I mean, not knowing this story, like these. These aren't story. spoilers if you like it's no, a true it's story true. and like but um yeah so Google I mean it. Naomi Watts was fine too. The I didn't like I think she's good. Yeah, I, thought really she, good. I thought she was on one note the whole time, especially when obviously what happens to her in the, the film, I don't want to reveal it, but she's sort of just on one note. But let, let me just get to this yeah, one. Yeah, one my sure. basic issue with the film is like it's based on true story, that's fine, I'm not complaining. Like I'm not gonna be politically correct and get all yeah. offen- offended <laughs> by the fact that it's yeah. about a white family. Yeah. Like tons of films have done that. But I just find it's more about the attitude of the direction that bothers me, just sort of the, the constant manufacturing of emotion in certain scenes and uh, certain plot points that play out very, very simplistically. Um, just it's everything in it sort of see, feels very sort of cliche and tacked on. Like forced? Like, 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 not even that? necessarily forced, just what happens. It doesn't feel natural to something like the, what, what actually being caught up in this situation. Yeah, but I, mean, I think... If they, if they had went for a grittier style, like I was saying, like Alfonso Cuaron, and actually tapped in more to the, the, like, the bleak realism of it all, I think it would have been a lot more effective. And I, I understand where you're going with that, Same. but I think that's the type of film that it is. The, even the name The Impossible. And it's just supposed it's, it's to be this the, crowd... It doesn't feel The Impossible. Yeah, it feels the, the possible. Oh, really? I, I don't know. But I think it's just... It's this crowd pleaser movie that I think people yeah. will eat up. Yeah, I mean, and it's coming I, I, on December theatrically. Yeah, December twenty first. So yeah, right so in hopefully it'll it's like, get some attention and people will go and see it. But I've been hearing people. You make themselves. a good point, Parker, because like it is a little manipulative and it's just trying to throw those emotional beats at you mm-hmm. one after one after one just to evoke this emotion. I think it'll work with a lot of people. It worked with me and it worked yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, didn't work with you, but I mean. Uh, we talked about the score. Me and Eric really yeah. like the score. It's it sounded yeah. lost reminiscent. Yeah, well, I said it sounded like Michael Giacchino, but I don't think it was him at all. But like the very beginning, it's just that yeah. I really like Michael Giacchino, and the score it hit with me. It wasn't him, but it was sounded similar to his work. Mm-hmm. And I know you said it sounded like you didn't. I just really... it was like when I saw Beast of the Southern Wild. Same reaction. Oh, yeah. Just the music was just hitting you over the head in like every scene. It didn't compl- oh. <laughs> didn't really compliment the action. It didn't really add. Like it just kept felt like it was like. Like punching me in the face to get a reaction. That's just how I felt when I was watching it. All negative comments can be sent to Parker. There you go. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I but no, I, I totally get what he's saying as well. It is very smoltsy at times, but you know what? It, it hit me emotionally, and and I think it will hit a lot of moviegoers emotionally. Like, yeah, I agree with you guys. I think most people will like it. I, like you said, it's, it, it is a crowd pleaser. It just didn't hit you. How? Uh, well, it's not even that. Like I saw the emotion coming, but I just wasn't just, buying it yeah, because okay. it felt very tacked on and cheap. All right. But cold blooded. All right. So to sum that up, Maybe. I think. I think it's it's one of the better films I've seen here, in my opinion. I would say it's up there near the top, or if at the top for me. So yes. what do you guys give it out of five? Four and a half. Yeah, four and a half. I, I give it. Two. I can give it two and a half. Okay, well, okay. All right, so that pretty much wraps that up. Uh, we'll be back with some more video vlogs in a bit. Um, I'm Matt Rohrbeck from MovieNight.com. You can find uh, more of my work there and at Twitter, at Movie underscore Night. I'm Eric Marchin. You can also find my writing at MovieNight.com and uh, my Twitter handle is at EM6211 and the film slate at Rogers TV. 
and this is uh, Parker Mott, the cold-blooded person. <laughs> <laughs> and you can uh, read my work on Movie Night uh, at thefinaltake.com and at filmslatemagazine.com. And on, you can follow me on Twitter at Parker Mott. This guy's always busy. Busy, busy guy. See you guys. Bye.